Welcome everyone to the technical analysis video for the week of February 26th through March 1st. We are at the end of this very short month and we are entering our final month of quarter one. So make sure you guys are paying close attention to the markets. And with that, let's start off with the S&P 500. So SPY last week hit a very critical level that I mentioned, and if you guys were active in the private CFO Discord, you guys know that I have said that SPY can reach 510 by the end of this week. And guess what? Let's take a look at last Friday's candlestick on the daily time frame and take a look at the high of the day. And the high of the day was 510.13. That's right. It was sitting at $510.13 before we saw a nice rejection to the downside. And so obviously I was off by 13 cents, a small 13 cents, but you guys get the point. So 510 here is now officially a resistance level since we are rejecting from it as we saw last Friday. Now, what's interesting about this day was that the daily volume was kind of low. And the reason why I say that is that we had a nice gap up at open, hit a new all-time high level, and then rejected down closing red as a daily candlestick, obviously not by number, since we did end up uh, up 0.07% from last Thursday's closing price. So, um, you know, even last Thursday, I would have expected a larger volume as well with this very big gap up at open and a continuous drive to the upside and to new all-time high levels. And instead of seeing that very big, large green volume bar, we got this. And so the past two trading days worth of volume has been kind of itching my brain because I have been seeing that overall, we've been seeing the daily volume lower than the average volume and it's becoming an increasing occurrence. Now, another important thing to know about the volume is that during this entire run up since uh, mid December, we've been seeing larger red selling volume bars. Okay, and sure, that can just be a simple explanation of people taking profits as the market goes up and we're seeing these uh, very short-term minded short sellers trying to take advantage on this exact red day and so far that's exactly what it seems like but from a longer term perspective this is important to note because as the daily candlesticks get smaller excuse me, the daily volume bars continue to get smaller and smaller and staying below this average volume line while we're getting simultaneously these big red volume bars to the upside. Uh, well, not to the upside, but these very, very big pops and volume bars. It's a bit concerning as we continue to drive up higher into new all time high territory where anything can go. And that means short sellers have a large opportunity in front of them, laid out in front of them to uh, push for a large pullback to the downside and completely take out any FOMO buyers who may be buying at the top here. Now, personally for me, um, I don't think it's a good idea to be buying up here, especially after this entire run up that we got since October's lows. So, you know, again, FOMO buying is definitely uh, fueling this market up higher and also all the shorts that are continuously getting squeezed out. And again, it, just by the volume itself, uh, we do know that the market has continued to run up to the upside without a need or a necessity for a large amount of buying volume. So again, the volume is, the volume is still telling us that the market is still going to be making higher highs and higher lows into new all-time high territory. But things are literally, quite literally, getting frothy up here. And uh, based on my gut feelings and 
based on what I said in the market summary of this week's newsletter, which you guys should have read first, um, I am definitely thinking that we should be getting some sort of a pullback. Now, obviously, this price pad structure that I've uh, drawn here back in the week of uh, February 12th, so right after the CPI print that we got uh, for the month of January, uh, this price pad structure is obviously not going to be intact anymore, but the general idea has been completed. All right, so we've been making higher highs and higher lows after the CPI print, and ultimately we made that all-time high print that I've been expecting. But now, we are waiting to see if we get some sort of a pullback. And like I said last week, I'm expecting at least a 5% pullback. But the more we go up higher, this 5% pullback is going to be elongated to 6%, 7%, 8%, or maybe it might be a 10% at some point. And so far, based on the closing price on last uh, Friday here, if I pull back to this 477.50 level that I've been really just talking about for weeks, uh, it's now sitting at 6%. So, you know, at some point, you have to really ask yourself, is, is a pullback coming, All right? But I think that's a very important question to ask yourselves in the next few coming days and maybe in a few weeks into the new month of, uh, new month of March here, uh, is that, you know, the markets are most likely going to be tired of running straight up. And so the moment when we ask ourselves, is this too much? Or when will the market stop running? Or maybe the market may not stop running to the upside. It's absolutely the time when we need to be focusing on when the sellers are going to be coming in. Because that is usually when the markets decide to sell off and pull back, creating a reversal to the downside. And so again, you know, it, it, that's mostly all speculation but that's usually when we start to see the market turning over. So again, when you start to question if the market will continue to move to the upside forever, that's usually a point where the market starts to turn over and creates a new trend to the downside. And that's when we will get that nice pullback for at least 5%, depending on where and when we start the pullback. All right, so with that, let's take a look at our first name of this week, Starbucks. So Starbucks, um, you know, this one has been pretty amazing because last week I have mentioned that there is a chance that we can be seeing another inside weekly candlestick. And guess what? That's exactly what Starbucks gave us. And last week we we're just we we're just basically witnessing this uh, price action where it's getting tighter and tighter on a weekly basis. And so there is a good chance that this week, a full trading week, can also give us another inside weekly candlestick. And in fact, that's probably going to be ideal because that means we're about to see a very, very large impulsive breakout to either side. Now, the reason why I say either side is that so far, we're making sort of a small wedge here on the weekly time frame. And if you guys didn't know, a wedge chart pattern is neutral. It will give us an entry to the upside or to the downside. So for Starbucks here, it'll be very, very ideal if we can continue to move tightly sideways and giving us back-to-back -back consecutive inside weekly candlesticks. Now, realistically, there's most likely going to be some sort of a breakout to the upside or to the downside this week since it is a full trading week and earnings is out of the way as well. So uh, again, personally for me, our two point game plan that I've described last week is that we first see a short to the downside and then we can see that large pivot bounce long entry point at 85 dollars okay so roughly around over uh, 85 dollars and 10 cents and that's somewhere around this ascending support trend line which again is that large macro ascending 
support trend line that goes all the way out to March 2020 lows and then into May 2022 lows. So, you know, th that is kind of our ideal two point game plan. But if we do see a breakout to the upside this week on Starbucks, I gave you guys a long entry. I gave you an, an additional uh, part to this plan here, uh, especially if the price decides to break out to the upside. That means our two point game plan is basically negated. And if that does occur, then I want us to be able to capitalize on this opportunity to see a breakout to the upside. So uh, this 97.55 level is a uh, basically we're playing on a whole number level here. And this daily 200 SMA that's currently slowly, ever so slowly curling down and reaching and trying to reach the price action with the candlesticks. And so if we do get a breakout uh, over 97.50, the actual whole number, and we get an entry point over 97.55, we should be seeing the 200 SMA coinciding at that 97.50 level. And if we're able to break over that, that will be a short-term and long-term confirmation that Starbucks is ready to move away from both of these two ascending support trend lines that I've quite really made sure that you guys understand the significance of these two trend lines. So that will completely, again, negate our two point game plan from last week, which again, you guys should watch last week's technical analysis video. And uh, it will definitely uh, bring about a new uptrend for Starbucks and officially catapult us back into the triple digit share price. So if we're able to get a nice entry point over 97.55, our first target price will obviously be this golden whole number level of 100. Okay, so let me make that visible for you guys. Okay, so if we're able to hold over $100 as a new support level, then we'll have a large area of supply right over it and 102 will become our next price target and ultimately ideally my maximum price target for an entry point over 97.55 will be 104.50 okay so this is a level that can be seen on the weekly time frame as well okay 104.50 now obviously uh, on the weekly time frame uh, if you're able to break over 97.50 this week we need to be getting over the weekly 200 SMA as well. And on top of that, if we do break over the weekly 200 SMA and the daily 200 SMA and the 97.50 uh, resistance level, we're gonna have to deal with this weekly 50 SMA that's currently looming ahead and starting to actually flatten out. And whenever that occurs, that offers a very, very large area of resistance. Because that, that's where sellers are sitting, especially the longer term sellers on this name. So we need to be really careful and really hawking uh, the price action here if we do get a nice entry point over 97.50 this week. All right, so that is it for Starbucks. Let's take a look at our second name. CBS. So CBS here is pretty interesting and I kind of uh, give you guys an explanation why but uh, if you guys have been following me for some time now uh, CBS was kind of my most highly anticipated and well executed trades of last year um, but uh, I'm not going to get too much into that uh, but on CBS here in the weekly time frame things are looking very very interesting so first of all I want to take a look at the past year so when we had this very large move down and, and it was a news related uh, news uh, break to the downside, um, we had this kind of consolidation going on right underneath 775.50. And I, uh, I made a point of this uh, last year that this resistance level, if we don't break over it, it's gonna become a huge crux to future uh, price reversals to the upside. Now, obviously, uh, we are able, able to eventually get over it 
uh, around uh, early to mid December, which allowed the price to stay over 75.50 for quite some time. So this area here or this specific level at 75.50 is now officially considered an area or level of support or area of demand. Now, the reason why I am looking at this specific level is that if you go on the daily time frame now, okay, we have been tightly consolidating right over the 75.50 level. And thanks to earnings uh, on early February here, we were able to hold over the earnings days low and continue to move up higher. And now we've been consolidating tightly for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine trading days. And the fact that we've been continuously holding over the daily 10 SMA, right? And the fact that we've also been holding over the daily 50 SMA tells you that the short-term and long-term perspectives are to the upside. Now, specifically candlesticks wise, we've been making back-to-back -back doji candlesticks. So whenever I see this type of indecision, back-to-back -back consecutive trading days, okay, or consecutive daily candlesticks here, there is a large impulsive breakout incoming. Right, so this is impending here, and it's just like what we saw with Starbucks with the inside weekly candlesticks. So CBS here on the daily time frame, we have two back-to-back -back consecutive Doji candlesticks that are staying right over the daily 10 SMA and daily 50 SMA. So this is how you know the price is really squeezing. But in order to help us confirm that, let's take a look at the volume. So the daily volume, along with the average daily volume, is falling off a cliff here. And so whenever I see this occurring while the price is tightening up, we know for sure that some sort of a large move is incoming. Now, to me, based on my SMAs and based on uh, this price action and price trend, making higher highs and higher lows, and obviously holding over the earnings day gap up, is telling me that the price wants to see a continued breakout to the upside. Okay, and that's the reason why I gave you guys this entry point for this week, long over 77.55. And uh, again, this entry point is going to be over last Friday's high of the day. And that's important to know, right? Whenever you break over a previous candlesticks high of the day, that usually indicates that buyers are strong, right, for that day and uh, getting over and breaking over the previous high of the day is a big, big feat for that specific day's trend. So CBS, if we're able to see a breakout over 77.55 and ultimately over this descending resistance trend line that has currently been made thanks to the nine days of consolidation, uh, we should be able to see a very quick move to the upside to 79.20, which will be our first target or if you guys just want to round down to a whole number $79 um, and also we'll be able to finally fill in this very very tiny gap down that we saw in between in January 11th through January 12th and that will eventually kick out all of the supply that's currently sitting in this gap down and hopefully we'll be able to see a nice rapid move back up to $82, which is where we exactly topped out in early January, right? Now, if you guys remember, um, I actually um, made this nice price pad structure to the upside, um, detailing how you know this is something that we can be generally seeing from CVS after we have uh, basically consolidated really well right underneath 75 point 50 and if we do attempt a breakout again we could be seeing something like this and this is exactly what we did as the price literally moved up had a nice impulsive break to the upside consolidated moved impulsively to the upside consolidated and then moved impulse impulsively to the upside until it stopped working right so this is a pretty textbook uptrend with higher highs and higher lows and then ultimately we ended up at $82 which is again 
a very critical level of resistance right so this $82 level of resistance is going to be very very important for our long uh, term price target and also on the weekly time frame the weekly 200 SMA has continued to rise up higher and higher and also widening the distance and gap with the weekly 50 SMA so that means that there is a chance that the price will be able to break over the weekly 200 SMA um, and especially be able to retest $82. So at some point, maybe in the next few weeks, maybe in the next couple of days, we might be seeing the weekly 200 SMA coinciding with this weekly $82 resistance level. Okay, so make sure you guys are hawking this one and have your alerts on because this right here, you do not want to miss the breakout move. And last but not least, we have CELH. So I go pretty deep into this one uh, in the uh, newsletter for this week and the reasons why I'm bullish. Uh, but Let's just focus on the technical analysis for this name. So first of all, uh, CELH Celsius has been doing absolutely great after pivoting away from this $50 whole number level. And obviously uh, it's been uh, a huge, it's, it's basically pivoted at this very huge demand area between $49 and $52 and has not stopped ever since. And so uh, with earnings coming up, I want to be able to play an earnings run up. That's right. It's one of our favorite, favorite uh, things to look out for here in the Trucks Focus One community. Um, but uh, the number one reason why I want to take a look at this name this week is that we are able to break over this very large area of, of, of supply. And when I say large, well, it's been a long time supply area since um, right over here. Uh, November of 2023 so right before the split and so now when you extend this supply area area all the way out to current levels uh, we are starting to see that the price is treating this previous supply area as a new area of demand and that's particularly interesting to me because if we're able to hold over this area of supply that has been really being a being a really uh, annoying type of uh, I guess uh, crux to the buyers here um, you guys can see it right here as well where we attempted to get a nice breakout but once it hit and really just had a nice little tap at the supply area we saw an immediate rejection and ultimately a huge move down and so uh, the fact that we're now staying over it and bouncing at this supply area tells me that the bulls are fully in control here and they can definitely be in control even more as we head into earnings pre-market on thursday of this week so again this one's going to be a little bit riskier uh, name here, but it could be a very easy swing trade for us this week if we do get a nice entry point tomorrow at $65 or over $65.10. So again, $65 is the whole number resistance level on the daily time frame, and our exact entry point should be over $65.10 for that confirmation. So again for CELH um, if you're able to get a nice uh, breakout over 65 all I want to see is a very very nice simple retest of the all-time high level or area at $69 now I've been seeing a lot of people talking about uh, Celsius needing to be over $70 but based on our uh, data points that we have the actual data points in the past, I just want to focus on uh, the, the, the reality here of the fact that the price can reach $69 again if we're able to break over $65. And if you have a nice uh, uh, stop loss, okay, uh, about at least a dollar from entry point, we can have a nice one to four risk to reward swing trade into earnings. And again, I am hoping that earnings can propel um, 
the momentum of the buyers to bid the price up higher right back into the all-time high, the previous all-time high levels here, and eventually um, have a nice little peak over $69 and making a new all-time high level. Okay, now obviously uh, we do not want to be holding over earnings, and I could care less on what can happen in earnings. Um, if it does go over to $70 and we see a nice, you know, big shot upwards for the earnings reaction, that's great. But right now we're going to be focusing on Celsius before earnings and try to and try to bank on a potential earnings run up. Okay, so this is the trade idea that's most likely going to be considered the most risky swing trade for this week. All right, so that is it for this week. Uh, this is kind of a lengthy technical analysis video, but you guys seem to enjoy uh, these longer form uh, technical analysis videos. So I'll make sure to at least go over 20 minutes filled with good and most importantly, applicable technical information. So good luck tomorrow morning and make sure you guys always always have your alerts set up at these desired entry points and make sure you guys are executing with great risk to reward um, ratios and risk management thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys next week